Check it out. In this video, we're going to be talking about turbos. Did you know that most newer vehicles are coming with them because you can fit a smaller engine with more horsepower and better fuel economy? Turbocharged engines do have a lot of moving components and turbos themselves can fail. In this video, I'm going to show you how a turbo might fail and warning signs to indicate a failing turbo. And if it turns out you do need a turbo, you can get yours at 1AAuto.com. Let's get into it. Okay, let me start by going over some of the warning signs that may indicate that you have a failing turbocharger. One of the first things you may notice is a significant lack of power. Uh, I ain't got nothing. It'd help if the car was running. Another sign would be a check engine light. You can use a code reader to check the code, and if you have an overboost code or underboost, then it's probably related to your turbo. Also, you may notice you're filling up at the pump more than usual. That's because your fuel economy is being impacted. Another thing you may notice, coming out the tailpipe, dark or blue smoke. I'm exhausted. Black smoke is typically unburnt fuel. Blue smoke is gonna be burning oil. One last thing to look out for, you probably have a low oil level, and that's due to oil consumption. You should check the intake, see if there's any oil in there, also the intercooler. If you don't know what an intercooler is, it comes after the turbo, the hot compressed air goes through it, kind of looks like a radiator, and it cools the air down before it goes into the intake. This is a common spot for oil to collect and pool up. Oh geez, that's a lot of oil. Now that we've gone over some of the signs of a failing turbo, let's take a look at a turbo that we know has already failed. Here we have a turbo off a diesel engine, and this is a VGT turbo. That means that it's a variable geometry turbo, which means there's vanes inside here that are gonna vary, and that's gonna change the airflow. Right here we can see the vacuum actuator that actuates the vanes, and if we tried to move this, this should move pretty freely and I can't even move it with my hand. If I use a wrench, I can slide this over. That's gonna move the vein, but it's very tight. It shouldn't be that tight. We suspect that this turbo failed because of carbon buildup on the veins and caused those veins to just seize in place. So let's take it apart and see what's going on. right off. You can see inside here where this is all carboned up and this is where the veins are and this plate will actually move and right there is where the pin is. You can see that the lever moves right there and that should move this ring back and forth. These little levers are actually attached to the veins underneath here and those veins will open and close. If you can see those. but that should move very freely, not, not as tight as this. And whether you have a smaller diesel turbo like this or even a larger diesel turbo, it's pretty much gonna work the same way, just like that to vary the airflow. This happens to be a turbo from a gas engine and this vehicle has a wastegate. So similar to the vanes, when there's too much pressure or it's spinning too fast, this will actually open up and it let off some of the pressure. And this is a major reason why you would want to replace the turbo because this gets frozen and it's not letting off the pressure. And these are connected to a vacuum actuator, which sometimes these will mess up in certain cases, you may be able to replace just the actuator, but for the most part, if this is seizing up, you're gonna to have to replace the whole turbo. 
This is the turbo from the diesel, and it's the same as the gas in the fact that you need oil to lubricate the turbo. There's always gonna be an oil feed line and an oil return line. Another reason why turbos would fail is the bearings not getting lubricated and cooled with engine oil, and it needs to be quality. You wanna use a good synthetic oil and change it at regular intervals. It's important in older vehicles that have turbos to let the vehicle idle down for a little while when you come to a stop before you shut the vehicle off. The turbo is hot and the oil that's sitting in there can just burn off and cause more carbon buildup inside there. That's gonna impact the longevity of the turbo. So it's important to let it run for a while, cool down the turbo before you shut the vehicle down. We're gonna simulate how this works. We're gonna use some compressed air on the exhaust side and you can see where the pump side is gonna be spinning and that would be pumping the air. More air equals bigger explosion, which equals more power. A malfunctioning turbo is important to address quickly because you run into the risk of damaging other parts in your powertrain. On a diesel engine, you could have a runaway situation where the engine just keeps running and you can't stop it because it's igniting the excess oil coming from the turbo. If you don't replace your failed turbo, you can cause excessive carbon buildup. With oil in your intake, it can foul your spark plugs on a gasoline engine. And over time, it can clog your cats, foul your O2 sensors, and worst case scenario, cause internal engine damage because the impeller may break off and go into your engine, and that's never a good thing. As you can see, it's important for a turbocharger to be operating properly for a smooth running engine. If you think your turbo is going bad, it's best to have it checked out, and if you need a turbo, get a high quality one from 1AAuto.com. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Give the camera a nice wink. No bad turbo here. No turbo here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't have a bad one though. VGT turbo, which is a variable, 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 variable.